Hello, welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today I thought we'd have a go at a killer Sudoku. We've done a lot of sort of killer Sudoku variants over the last few weeks, but a straight killer Sudoku, no, I don't think we've done one. So I'm going to take a look at this puzzle, uh, which is by the Danish constructor Henning Poulsen. Now Henning, I think I'm right in saying, was the Danish Sudoku champion a few years ago and is obviously producing puzzles now. And this was a puzzle that his... Uh, uh, web entry says was possible or possibly going to be included in the Danish Grand Prix uh, if they needed a very difficult puzzle so um, so that gives you an idea of what we might be expecting when we try and solve this in a minute um, just a quick uh, mention though um, of what we're going to try and do for you over the Christmas period uh, we do hope to have a video up on the channel every day over Christmas um, so do keep an eye open. I can't promise it will happen, but we're certainly hopeful. Um, now, with that, let's just have a quick reminder of the rules of Killer Sudoku. What we need to do is to make sure that the, let's look at this big cage up here, 40 cage. Um, now, what this means is that the numbers we put into this, the yellow cells have to sum up to 40. And the only other rule you need to remember with Killer Sudoku is that you cannot repeat a number in a cage. So, you know, if we put a 4 into that cell, there could not be a 4 in any other cell in the cage. That's all there is to it. Um, and with that, I'm going to start. And if you want to have a go yourselves, do click on the link under the video. Um, and here we go. So I guess actually highlighting that 40 cage, you can see this is eight cells large, this 40 cage. Now what that means is that there cannot be a five in this cage. Now why is that? Well, that's because if we add up all of the numbers from one to nine, we get 45. Now as we can't repeat a digit in a cage, any cage of size eight, eight cells, um, it must be all different digits uh, and therefore we know that the missing digit here must be the difference between 45 and 40 and that's 5 so there's no 5 in this cage and there's no 7 I guess in this cage because this is also an 8 cell cage any more yes that one that's a 9 that's there's no 9 in this 8 cell cage Okay, so there are some restrictions from the geometry and the grid R, but we can write in the value of this cell immediately. If you don't see how to do that, by the way, do pause the video and have a stare and th think about it. It's good practice, but the way we can write this, this number in is that we can use this 45 rule again. We know these nine cells will add up to 45 uh, because they'll be the numbers from one to nine, and we've got 17 plus 10, that's 27, plus 5 is 32, plus 6 is 38. So I know this cell must be a 7 in order to make this box add up to 45. Now a 17 cage in two digits, that must be 8 and 9. And that means the 10 cage must be 4 and 6, because it can't be 3, 7, it can't be 1, 9, and it can't be 2, 8. And as there's a 4 in one of these two cells, this six cage can't be two and four, so it must be one and five, and therefore the five cage is two or three, and we're off and running. Ah, yeah, we are off and running, because look at this cage here. So we've got a seven in this cage, which means these three cells must add up to 20, because it's part of a 27 cage. Now, the interesting thing here is that this 24 cage, that must be 7, 8, and 9, which means we know these add up to 20, and we know the maximum number I can make five cells in a killer Sudoku add up to, if they're in the same 3x3 three three box or row or column, is 35. And that's because if I add up 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5, I get 35. Well, if these are 20, that means I need to make sure these cells do not add up to, to more than 15. And you can see there's only, therefore, there's no way I can put a 9 into either of these cells, otherwise they will add up to more than 15. So this is a 9, 
This is a 7 and an 8, so this must be 5, 6 and 9. So these all now add up to 35. Now we've got, yes, look, we've got 9 in one of those squares, so this is an 8. And we've got a 6 in one of these squares, so that must be that way round. And we still need to put a 2 and a 3 into those squares, and we've got a 2 and a 3 there. So that's 2 and 3, that's 1 and 4. The 1 and the 4 results that this is a 5 and this is a 1. These three cells have got to be 1, 2 and 3 to complete this row. Uh, oh, actually, look, that's a, that is a very restricted cage. Those of you who do Kukuru will know that this uh, six cell cage adding up to 22, well, that can only be made up in one way. This cage must be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which adds to 15, and a 7, which adds up to 22. So this is quite restricted. In fact, that square is very restricted because this square already sees a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and a 5. So that one can only be a 7. This one can't be a 1, 2, or a 3 because they're already in the row. That one can't be a 4 or a 5 because of the 5s here. Oh, yeah, I'd already got that, in fact. I'm just repeating logic I've already done. Never a good idea. Ah, the 7 here means this is a 7, this is an 8. Therefore, these two squares are 6 and 9 to complete the row. Right, and those two must be 4, 5, and... This one can't be an 8, so we've got 4, 5, 8 triple along here, and the 8 is in one of those two squares. Oh, sorry, look, there's a 30 cage there, which is uh, four cells large. So that must be six, seven, eight, and nine. That's the only way of making 30 in four cells. This square, therefore, is a six, because there's already a seven, eight, and nine in the column. Eight and a nine in this column. So this one is a seven. And... Oh, now look at this. This is nice. The 38 cage can't contain a 7. So let's look at this box and ask where a 7 can go. It can't go in any of those squares because they're part of the 38 cage. Can't go here because of this 7. Can't go here because of this 7. So that's a 7. One of those two must be a 7, therefore, because of this 7 up here. These three squares must be 6, 8, and 9 to complete column 2. And sorry about this, let me just stare at this for a minute. Must be a 7 in one of these three cells. And uh, oh, that's oh, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of logic we need now. This square, let's look at this square. Can this square be a nine? Let's look at this, I'll actually put a nine in to show you why it can't be. Now, this is, this is absolutely lovely. So now, where can a nine go in this box? If we make this a nine, where does the nine go up here? Well, it can't go in this cage because we'd repeat the nine. 
and we have a 9 over here, so the 9 would have to be in one of those two squares. Uh, so there'd be a 9 in one of these two squares, which means where do we put the 9 in this box? Well, if there's a 9 in one of these two squares, they can't, the 9 can't be there. It can't be here because of this 9, so the 9 would have to be in one of those three positions. But, look at this. This 9 is in the same cage as those two, so the 9 would have to be here. But the 9 can't be here. We said at the very start, this 36 cage cannot contain a 9. So in fact, this square can never be a 9, because there would be nowhere to place a 9 in that box. Isn't that beautiful? So this has to be a 6. That has to be a 9. Now that can't be a 6. And is this useful? <laughs> um, well, actually, now they can't. Oh, yes, this is quite interesting, isn't it? This 38 cage now. We know there's no 7 in the 38 cage. Therefore, there is a 6 in the 38 cage. So where does the 6 go? Well, you can see it can't go down here because of this 6. And it can't go here because of this 6. So it must be in one of those two squares. So now... There must be a six in one of those two squares as well, in this box here. Uh, wow, okay. So I feel like we're gonna have to, we are gonna have to use these restricted cages. to make more progress here. I've just got to figure out how to do that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let's have a look at this one. So this one can't contain a five. So where does a five go in the top left? We can see from what we've already got, there can be a five therefore in only those squares. I'll color them in. These ones can't be a 5 because they're part of the 40 cage. That one we've already limited down to a 6, 8 or a 9. So the 5 is in one of those three squares. Now let's ask the same question in this box. Where can the 5 go? Now we've got a 5 here, so there's no 5 in those three. These two are part of the 40 cage. There's no 5 there. So the 5 must be in one of those four squares. Now, this means we've, we've yet to find where a 5 can go in row one of the grid. It's not in any of those three squares. It's not in any of those three squares. So it must be in one of these three positions here. Uh, so let's put that in five. In fact, I've just noticed this square, this square can only be a five because it already sees a six and a nine. So in fact, we can go a bit better than that. The five is in one of these two positions. Now, the reason this got me interested is let's look at this. This 12 cage now is resolved. Now 12 can be made in two ways when it's four cells large. It can be 6 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, or it can be 5 plus 4 plus 1 plus 2. But now, how can I put a 5 into this 12 cage? I can't. There's a 5 here and a 5 here. So this 12 cage is 6 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3. That square, therefore, cannot be a 4. And, oh, come on, I must get more than two digits for that. Ah! And these have to be two, three, and six. Oh, well, that's, that's quite interesting. Look, because this can only be a two or three, there must be a six in one of those two squares. Therefore, these two squares, which are a 6-9 pair, that's got to be a 6. This is a 9. 
can't be a 9 in a 7 cage. There's a 9 in one of those two positions. But the actual thing I was looking at with this 6 is, is if we look down here, because of this 6 in this square, we know the 6 is in one of those three positions in this box, marrying up with the positions of the 6s in this box. So again, we've yet to manage to put a 6 into row 1. And the 6 is going to have to be in one of those three cells. But these two can't be 6 because of the 6 here. So I think that must be a 6 which means that's a 6. Uh, oh, goodness me. Well, Let's just have a, oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. This is nice now. Look, we've got a 25 cage here in row eight. Now that in and of itself is not useful to me. I don't know the combinations for making 25 in six cells, but I do know that that means these three squares have got to add up to 20 because we know the total for the row will be 45. Now, that is interesting because now this square cannot be a one or a two. And it can't be a 4. And it can't be a 4 because if I put a 4 in here, these two squares would have to add up to 16. And therefore they'd have to be 7 and 9. And they can't be because there's already a 7. So this square is a 3 or a 5. If it's a 3, this would have to be an 8-9 pair. And if it's a 5, these two squares would have to add up to 15, which they can't do because we've already used the 6-9 option and the 7-8 option. So this has to be a 3. Uh, which means I can get rid of 3s from those squares. This is an 8-9 pair. Oh, better though. Look, the 3 here means where do we put a 3 in this box? It must be in one of those 3 squares. And that means there must be a 3 in one of those three squares by basic Sudoku. So the 3 the, the three is in the 7 cage. This must be a 3 and a 4. Therefore, it must be this way around because of this 4 up there, which gives us another, another little breakthrough. So this is a 2-6 pair now. 3-4 here. Oh, this is, yeah, this is nice. So now these squares must be 1, 2, and 5 in some order. Uh, that one can't be a 3 because of the 3 below it. There must be a 4 in one of those two squares because of the 4s here and here. There must be a 3 in one of those two squares. So in fact, that's a 3-4 pair at the top, which means this is a 1-2 pair. Ah, now that's also interesting because, look, we've got an 8-9 pair in row 8. So this square cannot be an 8. And we've got nines pencil marked into those two, sevens into those two. Well, one of these squares must be an eight as well. I don't know which one, but it's not that one. So there is a seven, eight, nine triple here. Uh, that can't be a nine because of the nine here. Seven, eight, nine. This must be a five, therefore. That results that that's a five at the top. One of these squares must be a 1. This 4 sees that 4. It's in the same box. So this is a 3. This is a 4. Sorry about this. Just a 
hopefully brief hiatus when I think. <laughs> um, just wondering about fours here with this four. Can we do anything with that? Oh, actually, this 22 cage is restricted now as well because, yes, it is restricted. So these three squares have got to add up to 13. Now, if this is a 4, I can never make these two big enough, so it's not. If it's a 5, these would have to add up to 8. Now, that's only possible if I make this a 5, which would repeat the 5. So this is not a 5, this is an 8. Oh, no, even that doesn't give me anything. Ha! Huh. Uh... Ah, 32 here. Yes, 32, look. That means we've already got 24 from this 7, 8, 9 triple. So these squares have got to add up to 8. Now, is there anything we can rule out there? And we know there's a 3 in one of these squares. So if this was, this would have to be, if there was a 3 in here, this would have to be a 1, and one of these squares would be a 4. Which is not possible, is it? Because look, if we put a 4 in one of these squares, that 4 there would mean this square has to be a 4, which it can't be. In fact, looking at this row, I should have got this before, row 8 needs a 4 in it. There's only one valid position for a 4, it's there. So this these three squares adding up to eight must be one, two, and five. One and five in the column means that's a two. Wow. Now oh, there must be a five in one of those two squares. Uh, surely this is going to be a useful thing to have spotted. I still need a three. This must be a three now from the earlier logic that we were talking about. That means this is a one. This three sees that three, which means there's a one, two there, which means this is a three. That's good because now this 22 cage gets resolved. This must be a two. Goodness me, this is an unbelievably good puzzle. But it is really hard. Um, we still need 3, 8, and 9 to complete this. So this must be a 3 or an 8. This must be a 3, 8, or a 9. That's a 7 or an 8. Just to complete this column, look. And ah, what am I meant to be seeing now? There must be something easy. Um, I think. So these two squares must be 1, 7, or 8. Ah, ah, yes, there's something. Yes, there is something, actually. Look, we've got 24 cage here. Plus 9 is 33. So I know the remaining four cells in row 3 of the grid have got to add up to 12. Well, that being the case, there's no way this can be a 7 or an 8 because the minimum I can make three cells add up to would be six if I make them one, two, and three. 
and 6 plus 7 or 6 plus 8 is definitely bigger than 12. So this square is a 1. Therefore, this is not a 1. Oh, and now we can do, actually, we can do more logic here. Given what I've just said about these squares needing to add up to 12, the 7 and the 8 in this row must now be in the 24 cage. And look, 7, 7, 7. So that square has to be a 7. Oh, that's lovely. That means that's a 5. Um... And I also need to put an 8, actually, in this cage. And that that can only go here. That resolves the 8 and the 9 at the bottom. That means this is a 3. That means this is a 3. Yes, that's nice as well. So now I've got 15 in my 24 cage. So these two squares have got to add up to 9. We can't use 1, 8, 2, 7 or 3, 6. So these two squares are 4 and 5. And there's a 5 there. 5, 4. This is now a 2. Ah, now this might be the breakthrough. I know it's taken me a long time. But I have to say I've enjoyed every minute of this puzzle. It every Every deduction has been really cool. Um, this is a 2, this is a 6. There must be a 2 in one of those two squares. Uh, I must have almost cracked it now. Yeah, let's look at this. 28 in these six cells plus 2 is 30, so these two squares have got to add up to 15. So this has to be a 7 or an 8, because this is a 7 or an 8. Um, maybe it's just Sudoku I need to be thinking about now. 6 is here, means there's a 6 in one of these two squares. We still need to place 1, 4 and 6. This must be a 4 or a 6. There must be a 1 in one of these two squares. Yes, that's it. Oh, no, it's not it. I was about to say this 6 is helpful, but it's not. It's not helpful enough. So this is a 1 or a 4. Oh, the three there, that's it. Three, two. Now this is a two. This hopefully can be a nine. Yes, it can. That resolves the eight. That resolves the eight and the seven. That means that's all fixed. Yes, okay. It's a slight hiccup there at the end, but I think now we're back on track. Um, eight here, eight here. Looking down here, I need to put a 9 in the column. That's going to have to go there. 9, 6, 4, 1, 6, 9, 4. That all looks like it's working. If I put a 1 in here, I filled in the puzzle. Does that say good? Yes. What a beautiful, beautiful puzzle that is. Wow, I loved that. Uh, do let me know in the comments. Um, how you found it. I mean, it's taken me a long time and I consider Killer Sudoku to be one of my sort of relative strengths. So uh, if any of you have blitzed me there, do let me know. Do let me know what I missed, especially. And we'll be back soon for our Christmas editions of Cracking the Cryptic.